Episode 81, Mount Ebal. Welcome to the History of the Bible. In the last episode, we talked about the battle between the Israelites and the city of Ai, which may or may not have had the city of Bethel included in the battle. After the battle of Ai, it says in Joshua 8, verse 30, that Joshua went and built the altar that was commanded by Moses to be built on Mount Ebal. In Deuteronomy 27, Moses commands the Israelites to build an altar and to recite the blessings and the curses regarding the covenant with the Lord. Deuteronomy 27, verses 1 through 8, are instructions from Moses to Joshua and the Israelites that once they have crossed the Jordan River, they were to go to Mount Ebal, and on it, build an altar out of uncut stones. Once the altar was built, then a layer of plaster was to be overlaid on the stones. Once this was done, all of the words of the law were to be written into the plaster. Then the altar would be used to offer up burnt offerings to the Lord. So this is exactly what Joshua did. He built the altar, overlaid it with plaster, and had all the laws of the covenant written on it. Then he, along with all of Israel, offered burnt and peace offerings to the Lord. The tribes of Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Benjamin stood on Mount Gerizim. This mount was directly across from Mount Ebal. On Mount Ebal were the tribes of Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Then the priest recited all the laws, along with all the blessings and curses that would come upon the Israelites if they chose to follow or disobey the commands of the Lord. This wasn't just done with the men of war or the troops that Joshua led. This was done with all the assembly, including the men, women, children, and foreigners. Mount Ebal was believed to be about 20 miles north of Ai, near the city of Shechem. What's interesting is that the city of Shechem is never mentioned to be attacked. With the city being near the two mounts that Israel was standing on, you would think that it would cause conflict, especially since the Israelites were called to destroy all the people within the border of Canaan. Scholars believe that the city of Shechem was never attacked. The city of Shechem has been around for a very long time with ties that go back to Abraham and then Isaac. Although Isaac's sons Simeon and Levi ended up killing every male in the city. But the city had been around for a long time and was connected to the Israelites' past. Because of these associations, scholars believe that when it says that foreigners stood with the Israelites on the two mounts listening to the laws being read, it was referring to the inhabitants of the city of Shechem. So the city of Shechem could have volunteered to join and give up their lifestyles to be part of the fold of the Israelites. However, there is a thought about the writing of this event that some scholars believe to be referring to something else. In ancient times, when a historical document was being written, and it talked about the victory that the leader or the empire had, the writer would sometimes put the events that happened at the end of the campaign towards the beginning. What is meant by this is that this section about Joshua, the Israelites, and foreigners all coming to stand on the two mounts to hear the reading of the blessings and the curses could have actually happened at the end of the battles in the land of Canaan. After all was conquered, all of the people came back to these two mounts and heard the law being read. The reason that some scholars believe this to be the case of this event being after the battles in Canaan, is because of the way that some ancient documents are written. The second reason is that this portion of the Bible is written into two different places in ancient biblical documents. The Dead Sea Scrolls, which are the oldest manuscripts that are found 
with the Old Testament have this event of the reading of the law happening before Joshua 5, verse 2. That was during the time that Joshua circumcised all of Israel before they attacked the city of Jericho. The Greek translation of the Old Testament places this event after Joshua 9, verses 1 and 2, which, as we'll come to find out, is after the treaty with the Gibbonites was made. So why do we have this event written in chapter 8 of the book of Joshua? Many biblical manuscripts paint the picture of the book of Joshua and the book of Judges as a unified narrative. All that to say, ancient writers used to begin their documents that recorded a victory by writing about the things the leader and their people did after the victory. Plus, scholars point out that the only way for all the Israelites to be able to do such an event is for the campaign to have ended in Canaan. This is why they believe that it says in Joshua 8 verse 34 that all the foreigners lived among Israel. The battle had to have already been won. In addition to this, later on in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, it talks again about all the Israelites coming back to Shechem. Mount Ebal was just north of the city of Shechem. These same scholars that say that the events at Mount Ebal didn't happen until after the campaign for Canaan was finished also say that the events of Joshua circumcising all of Israel happened after Canaan was conquered as well. Did the event happen right after the Battle of Ai, or was it not until all of Canaan was conquered? Isn't known. As mentioned, there are many different opinions and thoughts regarding when the event of Mount Ebal happened. The first thought is that the city of Shechem was conquered by the Israelites right after the Battle of Ai, but it wasn't written into the Bible. This is because the events of chapter 8 and chapter 24 of Joshua are describing the same event. Why, though, would the military campaigns in the territory in and around Shechem not be written down? Another thought, as we talked about earlier, is that the city of Shechem made a peace agreement with Joshua and the Israelites. That would allow them to go through a war zone without any issue. Also, this is why the Greek translation of the Bible could have placed Mount Ebal's events after chapter 9 of Joshua, because it was in tandem with the treaty that was made with the Gibbonites. The issue with all these things is that the city of Shechem is very important strategically. Writings have been found from Egypt talking about the city of Shechem and its role in the central hill country of Canaan. Before the Israelites got to Canaan, the city of Shechem was a powerful political center where it controlled most of the central hill country of Canaan. So to have no record of military battles with Shechem or a record of a peace treaty brings up many questions. In chapter 9 of Joshua, we will find a record of the Israelites making a peace treaty with the Gibbonites. However, Historically, the Gibbonites were much less of an influence in Canaan than Shechem, yet they are made a record of. The issue that comes up with a peace treaty is what type? You see, there are two types of treaties in ancient times. The first one was established between two groups of people who agreed to no aggression, meaning the treaty was set so that the peace between the two groups would be ongoing. This would often be done between two groups of people that were equal in power. The second type of peace treaty is when a stronger group of people overpowers a less powerful group. This would result in the lesser group becoming servants to the stronger power. 
The issue with the Israelites and the city of Shechem is that they were not both equal in power. And there is no record of the Israelites making the people of Shechem servants to themselves. However, it has been proposed as a thought that the Israelites and the people of Shechem did enter into some type of agreement, although not a peace agreement. The thought is, is that the king of Shechem and the Israelites made an agreement before the Israelites entered into the promised land. That would mean it was during the time of Moses. The agreement was not a peace treaty, but rather it would be called a patron-client relationship. This type of relationship or agreement would have the people of Israel being under the protection of the king of Shechem. Because if the city of Shechem had as much influence in the region as records do indicate, then Israel would have had to deal with them one way or another. This could have been dealt with during the time that Moses was alive. And that is why Moses tells Joshua to go to Mount Ebal before he dies. Because an agreement was already made with the people that controlled the mount. Based on this thought, it would be proposed that the events of Mount Ebal happen right after the Battle of Ai. The biggest issue with this is that the Israelites coming into an agreement with those who lived within the land of Canaan. However, no record indicates that the Israelites conquered the city of Shechem. Rather, there are some records from Egyptian letters that could show that a relationship was built between Israel and the city of Shechem. In these letters, there's a people group that is referred to as the Habaru. The term is used for a fugitive or refugee. Others have related it to being used to talk about slaves or servants. However, some scholars do believe that some of the references to the words in the letters could be referring to the Israelites. The reason for this belief is that the Egyptians talk about a group, the Habarus, who were involved in an armed struggle to gain control over the central hill country of Canaan. This would be dated to about the same time that Joshua and the Israelites were in the land of Canaan. And the central hill country of Canaan were where the cities of Ai, Jericho, and Shechem were all located. All this to say is that later on in these letters from Egypt, it talks about a group of Habarus that worked with the city of Shechem to expand the city's territory. Plus, other letters were written from cities within the land of Canaan asking for help from Egypt to stop the Habarus and the people of Shechem. So it could be that the Israelites and the people of Shechem join into an alliance that allowed for both of them to conquer territory. Or it could have been that a peace treaty was just not recorded. Unfortunately, we don't have the full picture of what happened between the Israelites and the city of Shechem. Assuming that the events that happened and Mount Ebal happened right after the Battle of Ai, that means that all of Israel was gathered there along with people that were non-Israeli. Now about the actual events of Mount Ebal, it was to gather all the people together to renew the covenant that was established between Israel and the Lord. In doing this, Joshua constructed an altar that was made out of uncut stones. Today, there has been discoveries that show the remains of a structure on Mount Ebal. The first impression of the structures show that it was built in the Iron Age. The structure was enclosed in an area that was almost one acre in size. This one acre would have an outer wall that surrounded the whole place. Today, scholars have found an altar on top of Mount Ebal, 
Now, whether it is an altar that Joshua built or not is debated. There are two layers that have been discovered. The first layer was built on top of bedrock, and in the middle of the altar is a depression. In this depression, charred animal bones and ashes have been found to be from the period of Joshua being alive. The second layer is built on top of the first. It's more of a monumental altar because of its size. It measured 23 by 30 feet and stood 10 feet tall with a 23 foot long ramp leading up to it. In this second layer, it too had charred animal bones, ashes, and pottery that was found. The whole structure was made out of uncut stones, just like Moses called for them to build it. Now, some scholars believe that the stones were never part of the altar, but rather they were just the base for a watchtower that was constructed to watch the crop and livestock. Either way, whether the events on Mount Ebal happen after the Battle of Ai, or if they happen at the end of the campaigns in the land of Canaan, it did happen. Now, it can't be said with certain how the Israelites were able to go to Mount Ebal without some type of battle or treaty being recorded with the city of Shechem. However, as we continue the story of the Israelites and the battle for Canaan, the southern campaigns will begin now with the Israelites having a foothold within the land. So join us next time in episode 82, The Gibbonites. Until next time, remember that you are loved, special, and worthwhile. Thanks for listening to the History of the Bible. Let's get the word out by liking, rating, and following the show. This episode was produced by Nikeo Productions. To check out other shows, search for Nikeo Productions wherever you listen to podcasts.